a Nottingham Forest podcast brought to you by Nottinghamshire Live. Hello, welcome to a third Garibaldi Red of a very busy week in the January transfer window as we also approach Nottingham Forest's eagerly anticipated game against Derby County at the weekend. And to look ahead to that and discuss one of the signings Forest have made this window, I'm delighted to be joined by former Reds left back Jim Brennan. Hi, Jim. How are you? Very well. How are you? Yeah, good. Good, thank you. Joining us live from Toronto, so appreciate that. Um, obviously, there's a Toronto connection with literally Richie Larea joining from uh, the MLS side over there. What can you tell us about him? Because we don't know too much about him at all. Is it a smart signing by Forrest? Yeah, I think it, I think it is. Um, and I'm, I'm delighted for Richie as well because he's he's always wanted to make that move to to Europe. Um, and I, for me, there's no better club for him to go to than than to Forrest. Um, and especially when when a team's playing well and the stadium's packed. Um, and I think he'll enjoy every single minute of it. Uh, and the fans will love the way that he plays. You know, he's a he's got plenty of pace. Loves to get up and down the line. Um, he's got that little bit of bite about him as well, where he doesn't mind having that little snap when he has to. Um, and he's a, he's a decent footballer. And overall, um, which I think they'll like, is he's, he's, a, he's a good young man. He's got his head on his shoulders and he, he's, got, uh, he's got some character. It sounds like what you're saying there, his style of play, speaking from your own personal experience, it, it translates quite well to the English game, then you think? Yeah, it does. You know, he, he's, like I said, he's got a lot of pace um, and he loves to get up and down the line, join the attack. Um, and, and he can defend. Um, he's good in that 1v1 one, one one situation um, defensively. So I think once he settles in, uh, and it will take a little bit of time for him to adjust. Obviously, it's different than, than MLS. Uh, going back to going over to the UK to play. Um, uh, and I think once he adjusts and he settles in um, and starts finding his feet, I think you're, you're going to appreciate the player that he is. Can you kind of give us an insight into what it's like moving from Canada to England. I think it was a bit of an age difference when you did it. I guess you were a bit younger. Richie's like 25, 26. But does yeah. it, is there a bit of a settling in period? And even though it's the language is the same, is there still a bit of a culture shock for you to adapt to? Yeah, it, it definitely is. I mean, look, for, for me, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Obviously, you know, my mother's Scottish, my father's Irish. And, you know, we would go back to, to Scotland or, or Ireland or into England. So, it wasn't too bad for me to settle in. Um, and I went over young. I was 17 when I first went over and, and uh, I landed at Bristol City and you know went through the academy, through the system. Um, but it will take a little bit of time for him to adjust to. Uh, you know, he's a Toronto boy. Um, but he, he'll adapt quick. And it, it will take a little bit of time to for him to figure, figure it all out. But I mean, hopefully it's uh, you'll start seeing the, the, his production a lot sooner. Um, and it did take me a little bit of time, just to football wise, and just to to really adapt to the style of play and how quick it was, uh, how aggressive it was. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think he'll be all, I think he'll be okay. I mean, look, he's experienced now. He's an older guy. He's not he's not young. Where he's coming over, a bit naive. Um, he knows what he's getting himself into, um, and I, I think he'll be up for the challenge. How different is? championship football to the MLS not necessarily in terms of quality we'll come on to that I think but in terms of the pace of it is it a, is it a lot slower uh I think the speed of play yeah it's definitely going to be uh, a lot quicker in, in England than what it is in MLS um MLS has got a lot of tangibles as well where you, you know it depends what city you're going to you, you've got to adjust um, you know if you're going into Salt Lake you're playing in altitude uh, you know you're heading down into Houston it's it's humid and it's it's 90 degrees um, and then you come into Canada and you're playing in Toronto or Montreal and it's freezing and it's snowing. So, you know, every city you, you've got to adapt to and adjust to and your style of play changes where, uh, where England is pretty consistent. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good tempo. Um, it's aggressive. Uh, and you can actually see, you know, I've been watching a lot of the games. The, the, the style of play has changed an awful lot in the, in the championship um, compared to what it was when, when I was playing in it. Yeah, I don't think you need to worry about humid 90 degree conditions over yeah, here. So. Pretty much. <laughs> Um, it's, you know, and the, the travel as well in MLS is, yeah, just for one game, you're, you're flying five hours to to play out in Vancouver or LA, wherever it is. So yeah, there's there's a lot that goes into it over here. What's the standard like the MLS now? Do you think is is it a bit of an untapped resource? You think for for English uh, clubs? Yeah, I think it is. Um, well, you, you're starting to see more players coming out of MLS and, and moving over into Europe now. Um, you know, we had a Canadian guy. Uh, uh, Buchanan, who was in New England, he's just gone over to, I think it was Bruges. Um, you know, Larea now, he's he's left. He's heading over into to England. And, 
you know, there, there's a number of players that are coming out of MLS that that are actually starting to get the attention of, of clubs over in in uh, in Europe um, and especially the the UK as well. So, I think you'll start seeing more players in time coming out of this league. Um, and I think one one big name player that's kind of really opened the door was was Alfonso Davies um, when he got bought from uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, and then you could sort of see a lot a lot of the scouts for now were, were really starting to come to the games to find that that next gem. Mm. I guess it's not just American players now. So, you mean, you mentioned Davis there. Uh, Canada's got a, a kind of a production line. You've got a strong national team at the moment, haven't you? Our national team's very, very good at the moment. Yeah, they really are. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's great to see. We, we've got a lot of players now playing at the, the highest level for some big clubs around the world. Um, and the the production line here in Canada is getting very very good. There's a lot of they've got a big player pool now, um, and now we've got our own domestic league, the Canadian Premier League, which is now starting to develop young young players. Um, and then we got the three MLS teams as well, uh, with Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. So we're uh, we're really starting to produce players now. And I think the whole thing is is get them first team football and, and see if we can push them on to to the big clubs in Europe. If we look at Forest then, I mean, do you get much chance to see many of the games? Do you keep tabs on them still? Yeah, football? I do. Yeah, I watch I watch the games. I watched the, the game the other day when Graven scored in, against Millwall, you know, in the last minute, which was was great to see. Um, and then I watched the Arsenal game. We had it on uh, on TV here live, so that was great. So, uh, yeah, th- look, I, I try to follow them as much as I can and watch as many many games as I can. What do you make of them under Steve Cooper? They look yeah, a good side. Yeah, I think they're playing very good football at the moment. There's a lot of energy. You could see, you know, that they're, they're all playing for one another now. Um, there's good energy in that squad. Um, you know, in particular, I love watching Brennan, Brennan Johnson play right now. I think he, he's on fire, and it's good to see now he's starting to get a – a lot of interest now from from other clubs. I think it was a bid that came in, wasn't it, from Brentford? Yeah. They, yeah. they knocked it back, didn't they? So, I mean, ideally, you'd like to see him hang on till the end of the season to see where, where the club ends up. And hopefully they, they can get into that playoff spot and, and may possibly get into the Premier League with a, with a few of the players that they've signed. But I think overall, they, they're, they're playing very well. It's entertaining football. Um, and I think after that Arsenal result, you could see there, you know, the, there's a buzz around the place now. And... Uh, I think they just got to carry that momentum now to the end of the season. And then I'm carrying on, obviously, uh, against Derby, which is mm. a game that they, they have to win. Um, you mentioned, obviously, Brennan, you play alongside David. You play alongside John Helder and his boys playing for Leeds this weekend. Does that make you guys feel a bit old suddenly, even though you're yeah, still... It does a little bit. And it's funny because, you know, when when Brennan was born, I was I was there, I was at the club. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see... It's, Great to see where he is right now. Um, and then I, I I came back to Nottingham, I think maybe two years ago. Um, and obviously saw Brennan and was at the training facility and went out for dinner with uh, with John. Also, it was great to great to see him catch up with Reedy as well. So see all the players. But uh, yeah, no, for, for me, it's uh, I think I think Steve Cooper's done a, a hell of a job right now with the squad, and I think they're only going to get better now with the, the signings that they brought in. What do you think about this Derby game? Obviously, you are keeping tabs on the championship. You'll, you'll know they're in a real mess as a football club. Does, does that make it a difficult, a more difficult game for Forest because it might kind of unite the Derby players, you know, us against the world? Yeah, a little bit. But it, look, it's a Derby match. Um, you know, it doesn't take you much to get going in these in these games, regardless where you are in the standings. Uh, it's it's a must win. It's a game that you have to win for the fans. Um, but I think with with Forrest being at home, uh, the momentum that they have right now, uh, I think they're in a in a great position. And Derby, yeah, look, I mean they they've uh, they've had a nightmare, haven't they? Really, I mean, what was it twenty? Was it twenty one points deducted? Yeah, yeah. And now they've got I think fourteen. So I mean they they've done all right to be fair. Um, you know, pulling pulling the points back in, and, um, and I think Rooney's done okay with with what he's got. But um overall yeah this is it's a massive game for Forrest and it's a game that they have to win you know sitting five points out of, out of that playoff spot it's a it's a must win for for Forrest where do you think these games are won and lost you've played in them and we'll come on to one game in particular I was going to ask you about it, but where do you think these big derby matches are won and lost on the day I think you know everybody on that pitch has got to win their individual battles, and if you if you can do that, you've you've got a great chance of of winning the match. Um, but it, it's got to be a, a 90, 90 plus minute performance. It can't be, you know, it can't be sixty seventy minutes. You can't play the, a derby match with passengers. Everybody's got to be up for the challenge, and everybody's got to be up for 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 that win. So, 
Um, and look, I, you can tell that the players would be up for it. I mean, the, the, these Derby games are special, the special games and uh, the games that you want to win. Um, and it just seems to, you know, if you can win the Derby match, your, your week becomes a lot, an awful lot better. And there's a, there gen, genuinely is a, a buzz around the town as well. Does that Arsenal game help for us? You talk about winning the battles. Obviously, Keenan Davis won his battle. Yeah. Um, Colback, man marks an England international out the game. And Spence uh, just dominated everyone. And Cooper trusts them to go one-on-one -on -one against top players in that game. Does that give Forrest a bit of a mental boost, do you think? Oh, for sure. Well, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's the psyche as well. You know, when you have a, a good performance like that, you're playing against the top Premier League players, you, you start to question yourself thinking, you know what, I can I can play at that level. And it starts pushing you even more now because you, you start getting more hungry to to get into the Premier League. Um, especially when, you, when you've when you tested yourself and you played against them, um, you held your own, you got a good result. Uh, it does give you a, a bit of confidence, that's for sure. Um, what do you make of Spence as an attacking fullback yourself? Is yeah, I, I, like I like him. I like him. I, lo I love how he joins the, the, the attack, how he wants to get forward as much as possible. And he's got good timing. He's got very good timing when he gets forward. Um, you know, he's not often caught in, in no man's land. You know, he reads the game and he's in the right position at the right time. Um, he moves with the flow of the match. So, yeah, I, I definitely like the way that he's performing at, at the moment. And extended his, uh, his loan tonight. Yeah, till the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. which is great. I think that's fantastic. Uh, that's the type of player that you want, especially the football that they want to play and allow the full, fullbacks to get forward. Mm -hmm, true. Um, let's talk about one specific derby game. I, I looked on your record. You played in two and one was a nil-nil draw at their place. But the other one you played in was a three-nil game. And as, as we were saying before we started, it's like my favourite of ever Forest game. Um, you won 3 0 in March 2003 when you're on the way to the playoffs. We don't need to talk about that, but we might do. Um <laughs> What are your memories of that specific game? Uh, I know we, Marlon scored twice and Darren Huckabee scored one. How well do you remember that game? Yeah, like that was uh, that was a big game for us. Uh, you know, we we had a great uh, great team that season. Uh, we, we felt we were invincible really that season. We uh, we had some good players. Um, we, we had some great results, and then obviously beating Derby at home. Uh, I remember Reedy. Reedy was on fire that match. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Reedy, Reedy played the, the first one in far stick. Marlon scored it back, back post with a header. And then I think he's clipped another one and Jono's hit the crossbars, bounced out. And then obviously Huck's being from Nottingham, he ends up getting that, that goal. And then I think uh, I was springing forward on one and Reedy slipped me in. And I think I clipped it over the fullback's, uh, fullback's head for, for Jono, who made a great run in behind. And we got a penalty off of it and Marlon scored that one. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great, great day. I remember the fans going absolutely mental. Um, you know, beating Derby at home 3-0 was uh, was a great result for us. Um, what can Forrest... Let's, let's, let's say Forrest win this game. I mean, what what do you take out of it in terms of momentum then? Because I know you were you were on a right tear at that point. Does it make a huge difference? Oh, it does, of course. Look, if you can win this one, you, you know, you, you beat Arsenal and then you, you win your Derby match. And it's just... It just adds to the confidence. It really does. Um, and then you start looking at the table a little bit different as well because that's another three points that you've picked up. Now you're starting to put pressure on the on those playoff teams that are, are just sitting in, a little bit in front of you. Um, and that momentum's got to carry you through the end of the season and keep you in that, that – well, get you into that playoffs and then you've got to stay there. So um, it's it's a massive, massive game for them to win and it'd be huge for the confidence. Um, going back to that, was that – was it the best time of your career? I know you went on to Norwich and played at a higher level, I think I might say. You had a lot of success back in Canada with, with Toronto, I think I might say again. Yeah. Um, but was that a real high point for you, that Forest team that year? Yeah, it was. Look, I, I, it's it's no secret. I, I really enjoyed my time playing for, for Nottingham Forest. Um, you know, I... Made some great, great friends. I love the city. Um, you know, we we had a, a great team as well at the time. Um, and I think the one thing that I really enjoyed was the football that we were playing. Um, you know, we, we were playing proper forest football. Um, we were moving the ball around. Uh, you know, Paul Hart had us, uh, had us uh, you know, organized and detailed uh, as much as you could as a, as a coach. And I think that reflected the way that we played. And uh, we, we just, we were... We were enjoying our football. We were playing football with a smile on our face. Um, you know, we had a good squad and uh, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed that time, that's for sure. 
What was he like with you? I have spoke, I know David Prottom well, he's on here all the time. He, he speaks well of him, but said he could be a little intimidating with the younger players, keep them in check. You, you were oh, in. Yeah. Of course he, of course he could, you know, he, if he was, uh, if he was upset with you, he'd let you know right away. Um, you know, he, was, he had a big presence, you know, he was a big man. And, um, but at the same time, you know, he, he had a good heart. He cared. Um, he genuinely cared for his players. And, uh, the one thing that he demanded was that you you worked and you gave it, gave him everything every single match. And if you did that, you know, you, you were on Hardy's good side, but, uh, the times that you did mess up or you, you took your foot off the pedal a little bit, you'd be, uh, he'd let you know right away. So he could be intimidating. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned this and Bomber. Bomber was brilliant as well. <laughs> yeah. Both of them worked so well together. And Bomber, Bomber was great. Um, you've mentioned Reedy a couple of times. I'll ask you two questions about him. Um, was he one of the most gifted players you played with? And um, I guess he, you're the left back. He's not doing too much covering for you. Was he a bit tricky to play with sometimes as well? Look, Reedy really for me, I mean, like I, I love him. Um, you know, he's a, he's a great friend. Um, uh, we actually did our, our UEFA Pro license together over in Ireland, so I was with him on that course, and uh, it was good to see him again and uh, you know catch up. But uh, he was a fantastic player. What a what a left foot that he he had. Um, but we had a really good understanding. You know, I I knew where where, where Reedy was on the pitch. Um, he liked to come inside. He'll drift in, which allowed me to get forward. Um, and we we created a really good partnership. Um, and I knew he wasn't coming back to defend, but. You know, it just it made my job harder where I had to get up and down that line. Um, but but I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it because I knew the the threat that he he created when he went forward and uh, the damage that he w- he would do in that final third. So, you, you know, there's certain players you, you've got to let them let them roam and get in certain areas and get on the ball because they're going to create that little bit of magic and, and win you games. And, and Reed was that player. Do you see a good knowledgeable coach there? He sounds like he was a bit of a fiery character as a kid, but you see a good coach there now. Really? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, look, he's, he's intelligent. He knows the game. Uh, he reads it well. Um, you know, and he's, uh, he's grown up in, into this uh, a really kind of uh, knowledgeable young man that, that knows the game, knows what he wants, um, has an understanding. Uh, he's working well with the players uh, that he's got right now and he's, and he's enjoying it. And I think he will, uh, I think he would be a, a very good coach at a, at a high level, uh, high level at one point. Um, what are you up to now? Forest fans would be keen to know. I know you're you're back in Toronto. What, what's happening with your life at the moment? Well, I was with the with York uh, York United for for three years. We had a good season this year. We we made the playoffs. Um, you know, we had a, the, the youngest squad in the league, and uh, you know, it was a few of the young players now starting to break into the national team. But you know, it was uh, it was time to, for me to move on. Um, you know, at the, the end of the season, we spoke with the club and uh, we both decided it was, it was right for me to, to move on and, and find out what my next venture was going to be. So right now I'm just taking a little bit of time off, enjoying the time with, the, with my kids. Um, and then I'll decide what, uh, what opportunities are available for me and, and which one suits me. Uh, you've got your pro license. So you'd obviously qualify for a high level job over here. I mean, is England an attractive option? It's hard to get in. There's only so many jobs to go around, but yeah, is it something you'd like? I would eventually, yeah, I would love to come back to the UK um, and uh, and coach. Yeah, that's for sure. I really enjoy it, um, and I do. I do miss uh, do miss living over in over in England. Um, I think just the, the football every day. You know, it's always on the telly. It's in the papers, and you know, you, you miss that. And you miss that energy on on, on match day. So yeah, the, at some point, I would love to come back back to England. How old are your kids, if you don't mind me asking? My son's turning 14 this year. My daughter's going to be 11 this year. And my youngest is going to be nine. Uh, so there's a, a Johnson that's playing, a Kjelda that's playing. Is there going to be a Brennan that's playing as well or not? Yeah, well, my, my two boys are playing. Um, my youngest one, Mickey, he's a, he's a good little player. Uh, my oldest one, he's he's a good player as well, playing at a competitive level. So uh, if there were, ever was an opportunity, absolutely, I'd be sending them over to England. What are you like as a uh, youth football is quite interesting. What are you like as a dad on the touchline who's also a former player and a coach? Are you shouting or are you taking a back seat? No, I, I take a back seat, but then you know, there, there's certain times where I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have a little yell at them to, to get them going if they're, if they're not putting the work in. Um, you know, look, the one thing I said to them, to, to my kids when it comes to football and whatever they do, uh, I'll take you wherever you got to go any time of the day but you, you've got to work you've got to put the effort in and the day that you don't put the effort in then i'm not going to be driving you all over the place so 
I, I expect them to, to make sure that they work, but at the same time, enjoy it, enjoy their football, you know, play with a smile on their face. There's no pressure on them. Um, and, and they're enjoying it right now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quiet on the sidelines unless sometimes I'll have a little, little moan at them just to get them going. Um, let's just finish talking about Forest and the rest of the season quickly. I think, I mean, I interviewed you quite a few years ago and I remember you saying not going up with Forest was a great regret. Is there a chance this team could go up this season, do you think? I think so. I definitely think so. I think they've got the players, uh, you know, the, the manager's doing a great job as well. Um, and you're only, you're, what are you, five points out of playoffs? You know, you're, 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 you're in the mix now. So it's, it's right there. They just need to keep the momentum going, you know, and, and that's what happens with, with good teams, um, you know, against Millwall, you scored in the, what was a 93rd minute or whatever it is, you know, you, you need that little bit of luck. Um, and they're starting to get it. And I think if they can continue to keep working the, the way that they are and playing the football that they're playing, um, I definitely could see them getting in the playoffs. And then once you get into the playoffs, anything can happen. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned luck and the playoffs. Let me ask you quickly. I mean, um, we talk about Paul Hart. He's got no time for Mark Clattenburg even now after sending Michael Dawson off in that game. Yeah, Are those, sure. those just the agonising things that can go against you in, in football? Yeah, it is, you know, and that's that's football. Um, you know, and that, that match obviously for us was was disappointing because we felt we, we we won that. We we would definitely get into the playoffs or into the into the Premier League. Um, you know, so we, we were very disappointed after that. I think that, that hurt us all. Um, yeah, and it was disappointing with uh, with that call with Doss getting sent off, and obviously there's no VAR either, so you can't go back to it. But you know, it's uh, that was that was a special time for for myself, especially uh, getting to the playoffs. Uh, we were that close, um, and we missed out. So hopefully, with this squad now, uh, with the players that they have and the momentum that they've got, um, they can get into the playoffs and and get forced into that Premier League where they where they belong. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So a uh, good note to leave it on. Um, we'll be back on Monday with David Pratton, who I mentioned earlier, talking about the Derby game and uh, Greg Mitchell, who's always on here as well, looking back on that and hopefully a win. Jim, thank you very much. It'd be great to see you managing in England soon. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. And we shall see everyone on Monday.